Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. Cedric here in Android with a brand new brew review. And today we are gonna talk about another French beer. Uh, one beer that I have discovered in a weird way um, when I was taking beer classes. Uh, and yes, that is a thing. I think about the Cicerone classes, for example. I was taking beer classes and I went to my teacher's house to pick up some books and yeah one beer expert to another he was like hey since you're here why don't we have a drink uh, i've put something in the fridge for you and he opened up a 75 centiliter bottle of this beer trois mont bière de flandre now this is the original bière de garde uh, recently it has been christened with a new name uh, namely the trois mont blonde bière de flandre because they call most of that range Bière de Flandre. But this is the original Bière de Garde. Now, if you want to know more about Trois um, I have talked about them in my videos about the Grand Reserve Triple and one about the Saison de Zoublon, which I really digged. Now, this is the original, so yeah. This is the beer I got to know them with. I have looked for it like for some time and then I just came across it in a French supermarket. So let's dive right in. Uh, again, lovely label, very classic. The background with the three mountains, the Trois Mont, uh, a lovely branded bottle cap, uh, very simple, just beige like the label with black lettering Trois Mont Bière de Flandre. Uh, that will make a beautiful fridge magnet someday. Luckily, I do have my Trois Mont glass. I'm very happy with that. And I almost smashed it while doing the dishes the other day. So I should really learn to be more careful with my glassware. Here we go. Practically no yeast residue on the bottom so i'm guessing it is not re-fermented in the bottle nonetheless this is a uh yeah a classic beer look at that beautiful color this is nicely golden blonde a hell of a lot of carbonation in there a lot of swirling a nice head of merely off white close to white foam um, very dense very tiny tiny minuscule bubbles so it is bound to stay on for quite a while. I do have this one bubble that I'm gonna pop. I almost dropped the glass again. I'm, I don't know what's, what's gotten into me the last few days. Yeah, some lovely swirling. Okay. Oh, that's nice. It's not just malty like any other beer, but it's also quite yeasty and I do get a bit of citrus in there, which is not what I expected. So I'm guessing the hops did their work. Uh, yeah, very nice. Now, bear in mind, this is a strong blonde beer. It's an 8.5% ABV. Uh, so it is equal to a Duvel. Now, what I remember from this beer, and it has been like, three or four years since I've had this for the first and, and only time. Um, I do remember that I liked it, but I also remember uh, thinking that this was just like a 6, 6.5% uh, ABV. So a quite dangerous beer as well. However, Brassé au cœur des Monts de Flandre Francais, brewed in the heart of the French Flanders. Um, yeah, let, let's dive right in. A bit of sweetness in the smell as well. Yeah, a bit harsher than I remember, but as we know, uh, memories are always tainted, are always colored, um, colored in by our minds. Um, just like the memory of a taste, um, is very dependent on the place and the time and the atmosphere. Um, so, but nonetheless, this is coming in very strong. So I remember this beer to be lighter. Uh, however, 
it is not and now I do taste that yeah very nice um, this is the very definition of a strong blonde beer it is very very boozy it is uh, a bit creamy with that nice thick head of foam I do get a lot of carbon dioxide in the initial taste. I do get a lot of booziness, a lot of ethanol in that same initial taste. Um, what else do I get? It's a bit sweet around the edges, uh, but it's not necessarily a sweet beer. So it's not dry, it's not completely fermented. Uh, it has some, some residual sugars, um, but it is definitely a strong blonde. Again, um, slightly citrusy aromas and they are in there, quite small, quite thin, but they are in there. Um, what I do get in that flavor palette is also a floral component and I can't put my finger on what that might be. Um, I do get a bit of violet in there, which is actually very nice. Um, and honestly, if I had to compare this beer to anything else, um, being so heavily carbonated and quite boozy and 8.5% strong blonde, uh, I would compare this with a sweeter version of a Duvel. Um, I'll put a link up here, but Duvel is like the mother of all strong blondes um, and the go-to beer of many Belgian beer drinkers. But yeah, th this, this reminds me of a sweet version of a Duvel. However, uh, yeah, the brewery started in 1920, but I do believe this beer is, uh, has originated like in the 40s or 50s, which is pretty much around the same time as Duvel did. So, and before any one of you goes like, Duvel was 1871, yeah, sure, the brewery was 1871, then they started brewing a dark scotch ale, and around the 50s it became the blonde beer that it is today. Nonetheless, um, that's a whole other video. Yeah, this is a beautiful beer, um, but very boozy. No surprises at all. You know what you get, what you what you see is what you get. Um, quite harsh even at some times. Yeah, this is a beautiful craft beer, a beautiful um, classic beer that stayed on but this is not an all-nighter at all. Uh, so I think that I'm gonna finish this beer slowly, cozily. So the only thing that's left for me to end this video is um, to score it. And yeah, I, I remember this like a uh, lighter, softer, creamier, but nonetheless, I do remember it being hella good and it is still hella good uh, i love this beer just like i loved it the first time um i should be giving this like a 350 375 out of five um it's not a four or four and a half it's not that special it's not that great it's not my cup of tea that much uh but nonetheless a beautifully brewed beer let's just call this a 375 um yeah very, very, very nice. Can't wait to share a bottle of this, like a large bottle, with my friends. This is also not a starter beer, so yeah, be mindful of that. Nonetheless, if you guys live in France near the uh, Belgian border or somewhere in Belgium, the West Flanders, um, go ahead and buy one of these. If you have the chance, buy a tasting crate or a tasting box. Um, I love all three beers that I've had of these guys for now. Uh, I do have a bottle of the Heritage series. Uh, I'll see what that gives in a few weeks. But yeah, I'm pretty much convinced that this is a decent, nice brewery. So 375 it is. As usual, if you guys like this video, leave a comment down below, a thumbs up, whatever you want. Um, just let me know if you liked it. If you have any questions or suggestions, uh, leave them down in the comments as well. If you want to see more uh, 
click that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you'll get notified whenever I upload something, which should be Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, I am working on some brewery breakdowns currently uh, because that has been a while. And if you want to support this channel, well, I don't have any support links, so just share a video somewhere and spread the love as usual. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers, you guys.